So where do we begin? Well, I suppose I should tell you how I became the head of philosophy at the University of Austin. Come on, think. I want you to reach back into those minds and tell me, tell us all, what is it that you fantasize about? World peace? Thought so. <laughs> Do you fantasize about international fame? <laughs> Do you fantasize about winning a Pulitzer Prize or a Nobel Peace Prize? An MTV Music Award? <laughs> Do you fantasize about meeting some genius hunk, ostensibly bad, but secretly simmering with noble passion and willing to sleep on the wet spot? I'll take two. What was that? I'll take two. Kimberly will take two. You get Lacan's point. Fantasies have to be unrealistic, because the moment, the second that you get what you seek, you don't, you can't want it anymore. In order to continue to exist, desire must have its objects perpetually absent. It's not the it that you want, it's the fantasy of it. So desire supports crazy fantasies. Sorry. This is what Pascal means when he says that we are only truly happy when daydreaming about future happiness. He came today. Or why we say the hunt is sweeter than the kill, or be careful what you wish for. Not because you'll get it, because you're doomed not to want it once you do. So the lesson of Lacan is, living by your wants will never make you happy. What it means to be fully human is to strive to live by ideas and ideals, and not to measure your life by what you've attained in terms of your desires, but those small moments of integrity, compassion, rationality, even self-sacrifice. Because in the end, the only way that we can measure the significance of our own lives is by valuing the lives of others. All right, I'll see you all on Monday. Sorry about being late. There was, you know, a thing. Yeah, there usually is, Berlin. Look, I know that I'm not doing too well. And to torture a cliche, I would do anything to pass. Anything, huh? Any. Okay, Berlin. I will give you a good grade. I will give you a very, very good grade if you would just study.